Hi, I'm Dr. Marianne Sintron. We are going to do the letter D today. And does your child have a dog? So first we're going to outline the letter D. I'm going to share my screen. Let me get to it here. So we're going to do the uh, start at the top, make a line, and outline it with the hump. Three times, down, outline it with the hump, down, outline it with the hump. Here we're going to do the C stroke for the D, lowercase d, make a C and a line, a C and a line, and a C and a line. Some people will associate the tail, like the D, the D could be the dog with the tail, the dog's bottom with the tail. <laughs> so that might help understand the D. And we use uppercase D at the beginning of our sentences or the name, people's names. So I'm going to enlarge my screen here. And this is a cute little page. I always give you instructions that go with the page so you can know exactly what to be looking for. Look at these little freckles on this little boy and his dog has spots. This little person has fluffy hair and the dog has fluffy hair. This little boy has a mean face and this is called a bulldog, a bully and a bulldog. This little girl has um, her hair in little fluffy ponytails. This little dog has fluffy ponytails on his tail too, and also on the legs. This little dog has his nose up in the air and so does this little girl, kind of arrogant, right? Then we have two little dogs, one's just jumping and one's digging, but notice the ribbons. So they're in a dog contest and they're gonna see which dog obeys the best or which dog performs the best. So when you have a contest, notice the ribbons up here, okay? Pretty ribbons. We're gonna turn the page. I did a little sketch of my big dog and a little sketch of my little dog, who's very calm. And I cut out these ribbons, which are part of the pop-ups. And here's the stage. So you have ribbons again for the stage. And I'm gonna give the big dog this ribbon and I glue the little D on for that ribbon. Notice D-O-G, um, uppercase D at the beginning of a word and D-O-G with lowercase D for um, in the middle of a sentence. So beginning of a sentence, middle of a sentence. And then we have the big all uppercase capital D-O-G. So now we're gonna start recognizing again, red, yellow, green light, which is the line, red, yellow, green. Let's outline our uppercase D with a line and a hump. Outline our lowercase with a C stroke and a line. So let's go ahead and practice all of these. A line and a hump, a line and a hump. It starts at the dot. We want to be sure all the kiddos are starting at the same place and ending at the same place. Line and a dot. Here's the dot. Line and a, and a hump. Do a little bit more. Line and a hump. Line and a hump. Line and a hump. Here's our dot. Line. So let's see how the memory works. Line and a hump. Don't let the D become too skinny. Line and a hump. Move my picture down here. We'll do some more. Line and a hump. This is a lot of writing practice. Line and a hump. Okay, so now it's by memory. Let's be sure our children are making those D's a little fatter. Sometimes they want to make them real skinny mini. Got to make them fatter, okay? <laughs> So now we're gonna outline a little bit. I love how Pleasant Roland does this. It 
just, it's like going to the gym and having somebody lift the weights with you a little bit, and then you're on your own. So here is the line and a hump, a line and a hump, a line and a hump, a line and a hump, okay? Then we're gonna go to lowercase. First, we're gonna do both again, the line and a hump, and then the circ, the C stroke with a, with a line, okay? So we have the C and a line, C and a line, C and a line, C and a line. Now the darkness goes away. We're still tracing and that's cool. C and a line, C and a line, C and a line, C and a line, C and a line. And okay, good job. So here, the tracing is gonna go away. So we want to start at the C spot, which is on the yellow line. Go to the red and come down. Go to the yellow line where the dot is. Go to the red, come all the way down. C and a line. Now we're going to do it again without the help. C and a line. C and a line. C and a line. Make sure your child is making a good round C so that it's not a skinny or a flat D. C and a line. Okay, a little bit of scaffold here, a little bit of support. We're gonna outline again. Then the outline disappears. So let's work with that visual memory and motor memory. C and a line. C and a line. This is our D. D says duh, C and a line, C and a line. Okay, good job. Now we're gonna do both, uppercase, down and a hump, C and a line. Down and a hump, C and a line. If you need to pause this because your children need more time, that's okay. So here we go, down and a hump, C and a line. Down and a hump, C and a line. One more. Down and a hump. This one's a little tight. <laughs> C and a line. Okay? Good job. Now, on page five, we're going to see associations. And you're going to say a word that the child's going to circle. So these are all dishes. We have... A pitcher, a lot of kids don't know what a water pitcher is. And we have mugs, we have a saucer in a bowl and a big soup mug. So here we have pants and a dress. They're both garments. Here we have um, furniture. We have a desk and a chair. Here we have parts of a, of a house. We have window and a door. And here are things in a dentist office. We have a dentist chair and a toothbrush. Here we have two girls. One is a singer, one is a dancer. Here we have two animals with feathers. We have a bird and a duck. Here we have um, two toys. This is tricky because it doesn't look like a toy until you see the string. So it's a toy truck and a toy doll. We have two people who are in the medical field. We have a nurse and a doctor. And we have two musical instruments, a drum that goes and a trumpet or a um, trombone. Do, 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 do. Okay. So the other thing, show your child, here's a dog and a cat. They're both animals, or they could be called pets. And don't forget, dogs like to chase cats. That's gonna come up later. So in this first picture, I want you to circle uh, the soup bowl or the big cup. So have your child circle that. 
In the next rectangle, I want you to circle the dress. So have your child circle the dress. In this picture, I want you to circle the desk. The desk, if they don't know, you can let them know. That is a desk. In this picture, this square rectangle, I want you to circle the window with a curtain, the window. In this picture, I want you to circle the toothbrush. So we're not trying to make anything difficult. We're trying to make this real fun for them. In the middle, I want you to circle the cat. Meow. In this picture, I want you to circle the dancer. In this picture, I want you to circle the bluebird. The bluebird. In this rectangle, I want you to circle the toy doll. Now, you can pick anyone you want. I'm just doing this. In this picture, I want you to circle the nurse. The nurse has a nurse's cap on. And in this group of uh, musical instruments, I want you to circle the drum that goes bum, 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 bum. Okay, that's going to be the drum. Good job. We're on to page five. So page five and six kind of go together. Let's look at page six first. So page six is going to do a little bit of review and you're going to connect upper and lower case letters. Start from the left to the right. Uppercase A to lowercase A. Uppercase D to lowercase D. Uppercase C to lowercase C uppercase G to lowercase G. Then we have green, lowercase d, goes all the way down to lowercase d. So pause this video if you want your children to work independently before I start cutting all these pictures out. Lowercase g to uppercase g, a to a, c and c. This is activating prior knowledge. Uppercase G to lowercase G, uppercase D to lowercase, uppercase C to lowercase, and uppercase A to lowercase A. Now we're going to start with the lowercase again. Lowercase G to G, lowercase C to C, lowercase D to uppercase D, and lowercase A to uppercase A. And your child will start knowing what goes together. So now these are pictures. I'm going to have you give your child um, a pair of scissors. Let's say the pictures first. We have a garden and a desk and an astronaut. Anteater, girl, a cup, a comb, a doll, an apple, a drum, cake and a gate we haven't done f yet so we're not going to say fence it's good that's a gate so let's cut out there's nothing on the back so these dotted lines let you know cut them out so we're going to trim the outside first let your child know cut the outside first And he's going to have little scissors, so it'll take his little hands a little bit longer. You might have a child who needs a little bit of support. So you'll have an aid, or you could even help that child. So we're going to cut these all out. And you guessed it, we're going to be matching beginning sounds. So beginning sounds of apple is a, ah, doll is the, home is k, cup is k, girl is g, anteater is a, ah, 
Astronaut is a. Desk is d. And garden is g. So what you're going to do, go over back to page six. So these are the columns of words with sounds. It's going to be, remember I, I taught you the letter name, the picture, and the sound. So D, dog, D. C, cat, K. A, alligator, A. G, goat, G. Go to your first picture. G. Does your child know G for goat? Desk, D, dog. Astronaut, A, alligator. Ant eater, A, A. I'm going to glue them at the end. We have girl, G. We have comb, K. K. We have cup. K. We have doll. D. We have a. A. A for alligator. We have drum. D. Over here. Two more. We have cake. K. And the last one is G. Gate. So after I get them in the order there, your child should have plenty of room on the table. Then I just open my glue stick up and I just put, look at my little dot. I just put a little dot because we don't want the kids being all messy with this. Just a little dot and they could say the name again or not. Apple, A, Anteater, a. They can repeat after you. Astronaut. A. Alligator. Cat. K. Comb. K. Cup. K. Cake. And the last one is dog. D. D. Desk. D doll and D drum. You see how interactive that is? That is your science of reading, multi-sensory. You want um, tactile, you want kinesthetic, you want a lot of visual, you want to get your child speaking. A lot of kids in kindergarten may need speech help. So let's help them articulate these sounds. So we've already done that page. We've Cut it all up. So this is a this little <laughs> leftover piece with the dogs. I'm going to say some words. So this is page eight. I'm going to say some words, and I want you to circle your child to circle the head if they hear the the sound. So I'm going to look at my instruction and page eight. Okay, so I'm going to um. Let's see. Do they hear? Um, like for on this doggy, I want to say the word dot. Dot is the d in the front or in the back. The d is in the front, so your child will circle the head. The next word is den. Den. Does your child hear the d in the front or the back or in the front? And these are all in the instructions. I've given you the words you use. So the next word is dim. Dim. The D is in the front. Then we have the word wed. Wed. Where do you, where does your child hear the D? At the end of the word. Last word is mud. Mud. And we hear the D at the end of the word again, okay? So here we have, on page nine, we have another exercise that's so cool because it's categorizing, it's um, judging, it's 
It's being, you know, one-to-one -one correspondence. We have a big house, a little house, and two medium-sized houses, okay? So instead of just three, now we have four. But these are too large and too smaller, okay? Now we look at our dogs. We have two big dogs, two tiny dogs, and the other dogs are in the medium size, right? But these two are the same medium, and these two are the same medium. So let's go ahead, have your child cut out the dogs. And again, it's blank on the bot on the back there. This book has a lot of um, cutting out. It's adorable. So we're gonna cut out. Now, even as teachers, our brains are rewired differently than each other. So you might wanna sort your dog by color. or you might want to sort your dog by size first. But what I'm going to do, my rule is if you have a short line, cut the short line first. It's easier on little kiddos hands. And I'm going to try to keep them facing the same way, less sorting. And always turn the video off if you want your child to work independently without me showing what to do. So I'm going to sort by my color of my dogs. I'm going to put all the brown dogs on the left and all the gray poodles on the right. Okay, after I sorted by color, now I'm going to sort by size. Here's a big dog. Here's a little dog. Here is a little bit smaller than this one. And this one's the great big dog. Okay. When I have that sorted, I'm going to go ahead and glue it. This is just such a reward that your child have the reward of gluing. This one dot will do it. One dot. And look at this little dog house. Cover your glue, and then we're going to do the gray dog. So we have a big dog. I'm going to guess it's over here. The tiny dog is going to go there. The one that you have to be concerned about are the two middle. The two middle, the bigger one goes by the big side, and the littler one goes by the smaller side. Isn't that a beautiful sorting exercise. So let's give your child the reward to put the glue on the paper. It's nice if you have parents helping in a classroom that can walk around and help the students with the glue. Always cover the glue stick because they dry out. So that page is done. Good job. Now we're going to turn to um, more dogs. What I think I might want to do is cover this so that it doesn't distract us. And I'm just going to put this right there. So now you might wonder what, what do we do with this? And what this one wants is circle the dog that's looking the opposite way of the other dogs. So here we have one dog looking left, two dogs looking right. Circle the dog that's looking left. Okay, so here we have two dogs looking one way, one dog looking the other way. So I like to introduce left and right right now but you could say, circle the dog that's looking different from the other two. This one is different. 
Circle the dog in this group that's looking the opposite way. Opposite way than the two. Circle the dog who's looking the opposite way of the two. So this one is opposite. Or he's looking right. Those are looking left. So we're going to outline our dog again. A line and a hump. C stroke with an O. C stroke with a G scoop. This is review. C stroke with a line. C stroke and close it up. C stroke and bring that G down. Dog. Now, I don't think, this is page 10. My instructions, I don't think you do anything on the bottom. Um, yeah, so we're just talking about opposites. So turn your page. And what would be the sound of, um, okay, so hold on a second. A sleeping sound. So this is, oh, we're going to draw some pictures of things that would sound like duh. So um, um, a drum, a drum. Okay, so let's draw a drum with drumsticks. Let's draw a ding-dong bell. That's the sound of duh. Here's a... <laughs> A bell. This could have a handle. A bell. And then on my instructions, this is where I've given you the words, the pictures to draw. What about a dump truck? So we have the wheels. We have the front of the truck with the door and um, <laughs> here's the dump, the dump truck. And then we have, um, so let's do the sounds, drum, bell, ring, 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 and a dump truck sound so the recommendation was you make the sound and maybe one day I'll have um, an app or a playlist that has the different sounds as a child here's the sound they're going to draw but I have a feeling kinders are going to need some help drawing because I certainly am not the best drawer and then um, so now in this space I'm going to make the sound of brushing my teeth. <laughs> Does that sound like brushing my teeth? You could model it. So let's draw a toothbrush. It's just to get the kids thinking of sounds and pictures. When they see pictures, they remember. And I'm going to put a picture of a head with a smiley face because that, that was kind of weird. He, this person has healthy teeth. <laughs> so this is toothbrush. Okay. Now we're gonna turn the page to page 12. Now, now the book talks about odd dogs. It's odd for dogs to wear hats, right? This fire fireman dog, Dalmatian, has a fireman hat. The princess poodle has a princess or a queen crown. The Scotty dog has a Scottish hat. The fluffy little dog has a little flower in her hat. The other fluffy little dog has a bow. Do you ever see dogs with big bows in their hair? 
when people take their dogs to the vet, the vets love to put bows in the hair. This little dog looks like a party dog. It looks like a clown. That would be an odd hat. This little dog has a scarf. This little dog has a little funny little hat on top. This big dog, red dog, has a big red hat. And here is a Dalmatian with a, a sweater, no hat. And look at this dog has no hat. So we're gonna draw a hat. You know what? What does he look like? I'm gonna give him some spots on his hat. So I'm gonna just give him like a cowboy hat or maybe a top hat with some spots. You know, you could have your child copy what you draw. Sometimes that lowers the stress or you could ask them to draw what they want. So there's the spots. So let's outline the word odd. Okay, odd is ah, d. It only has two sounds, but there's two Ds in it. So we're gonna outline O, circle and a line, circle and a line. Do you think your child might remember DD because of all the odd dogs? I think so. Look down here, odd dog, ODD. You may wanna underline ODD. So Pleasant Roland has a story or nursery rhyme or fairy tale in all of her books. This one has a medley of them. And I think this is wonderful with my preschoolers. I used to do these fairy tales. So the preschoolers I worked with last year are in kinder this year. So they get to revisit some of these. Um, I did these with flannel boards and now we're doing pictures. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Let's look at this one. This is, hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such a sight and the dish ran away with the spoon. You guys know this one? Hickory dickory dock, the mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one, the mouse ran down. Hickory dickory dock. This one, um, all that I recognize is he has one shoe off and one shoe on. Little, little dump, my son, my son, John. Let me see something. Um, my son, John went to bed with one shoe off and one shoe on. That's all I remember about that one. And this is old mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to give her poor doggy a bone. When she got home, the cupboard was was uh, bare, and so the little doggy had none. And this little one, and again, I put this in the instructions. Little boy blue, come blow your horn. The sheep's in the meadow, the cow's in the corn. Where is the little boy who was fast asleep? He's under the haystack. Wait, where is the little boy who looks after the sheep? He's under the haystack, fast asleep. Or here he's by the haystack, fast asleep. So we want to introduce nursery rhymes to kids because they need to develop those patterns in their brain for rhymes. So let's look at the story of comprehension. So are we talking about Humpty Dumpty, did he sit on a wall or did he sit on a throne? He sat on a wall. This is, hey, diddle, diddle, the cat in the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. The little boy, um, the little dog laughed to see such a sight. And who ran away? The dish ran away with what? What did the dish run away with? The spoon. 
Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the stairs or the clock? Here we go, the clock. Little boy, uh, little, my son, John, he went to bed with both shoes on or one shoe on? One shoe on. And old mother Hubbard went to her cupboard. Did her cupboard have a bone in it? Or did her cupboard, was her cupboard bare? It was bare, empty, okay? And little boy blue, was he blowing his horn or was he sleeping in this story? He was sleeping, so we're gonna circle that. You see how um, encouraging comprehension is with pictures and colors. So now we're going to outline our letters again, our words. Dog, make your C with a G. Dog, outline your C. We'll close it up, C with a scoop. Lowercase, oh, sorry, we're gonna do our C stroke and a line. Our C stroke and close it. Our C stroke, go down to the, um, it's actually gonna go to the next red line which is like the top of the next line. So here we go, um, C stroke with a line, C stroke and close it, C stroke, bring that line down to the next line, which we color red again. Here we have dog, line, and a uh, hump. Round out your C stroke, C stroke again, bring it on down. We're gonna do it one more time without tracing. Do it all on your own. O, round it out, C stroke, and scoop. Now we're gonna do the lowercase, C, C stroke with a tail, C stroke and close it up, C stroke and bring that tail down. This should be red. Okay, so this is really cool. This is a doggy door. You notice it's empty on the back. So we're gonna cut it out on the line. And it's gonna be a door for here. Is that amazing? So we're gonna put a line here. And then we're gonna put the door right over the word. Glue it with your glue stick, cover the glue stick. Let's draw another dog. Here's my the face. Here's a floppy ear. Here's the other floppy ear. Two little eyes. And here's the body. It would be really fun to have an artist help us with some beginning drawing. Wouldn't that be cool? So here is the word dog. And that is the letter D. I don't believe, um, you know what? Yeah. Um, I don't see where the door would be anywhere else except back there. And there you have it. So I'm gonna stop my share now. Hope you enjoyed D. And our next letter is going to be um, S, which is video number six. So these are all in a very special order. They're sequential and they're cumulative, which is also the science of reading. So hope you enjoy this. And I'm so glad you're here. Bye-bye now.